everyone and welcome to Fletcher Farms Amarillo. I am Julie Fletcher and today I wanted to do a video as a follow-up to our scare in the barn video that I put out a couple weeks ago. If you didn't see that, we had a rattlesnake in our barn that was eating a kestrel bird that had just left the nest. Um, all kinds of drama that happened so if you didn't see that video I'll put a link in the description below and you can check that out but not wanting to have another snake encounter. I started researching ways to keep snakes out of your barn and wanted to share some of the things that I found out and have implemented here on the farm to keep snakes away. So not knowing anything about snakes and obviously being terrified of them my entire life, um, started doing some reading about them. So snakes like dark, damp areas that have plenty of cover such as wood piles or overgrown lawns or overgrown shrubbery or anything like that, tall grass, they like that just because it's an excellent place for them to hide. And also a place where food is readily available without any predators. So we pretty much had all of those boxes covered. Since we're building the new chicken coop, we had wood piles of scrap materials plus materials that we were using to build the chicken coop. So the tall grass was actually starting to grow up around those piles that we had out there. So that was one thing that attracted them. Plus, obviously, we have feed here in the barn. We have sweet feed for the goats and chicken feed and hay and feed for the horses. So we have everything covered here. <laughs> so we've seen mice and baby bunnies and things like that that are here in the barn and nothing to keep them away. So we had all those boxes checked. So we needed a way to keep the snakes out of the barn from potentially hurting one of our horses, donkeys, goats, or chickens. So I started doing some reading and some of the things that I found um, that came up in my searches were to put mothballs around your barn in piles. Apparently snakes don't like the smell of mothballs and they won't cross over the they won't cross over the scent. So I did some reading about that and then I kept doing some more research about that and found out that those are actually hazardous to the environment and that was something that I definitely didn't want to do because I didn't want anything to hurt my animals or potentially harm the environment. So mothballs weren't going to work. Something else that I found was um, chemical sprays they sell at the hardware store that are actually snake repellent and you can spray those around around your perimeter and it's supposed to keep snakes away. But that was something else I didn't want to take a chance on. I didn't want to take a chance on an animal getting into any chemicals or mothballs or anything poisonous. Um, so those just weren't options. Those weren't options for us here on the farm. So I knew that there was a natural way to keep snakes away and something else that I found, and this is definitely a natural way, um, are cats. Snakes are afraid of cats and apparently the urine smell will keep them away and make them not linger in the area. So I reached out to a friend of mine and she actually uh, volunteers for an animal shelter and she actually had a tomcat and four kittens that were looking for a home. So of course, since we rescue all the animals as much as we possibly can that need homes, we said yes, that we would take all five of them. So we have Tom, who is the dad, and then there's four kittens who are Mike, Will, Dustin, and Lucas. And before you can say anything, yes, I'm a fan of Stranger Things and needed four names for kittens. And well, there we go. <laughs> so, we decided to go ahead and get the cats, so I'll put some videos in here from when they got to got to the farm and just them being being kittens because kittens are just they're so curious and they're funny and all four of them play together and it's it's really neat and Tom the dad actually te is teaching the cats how to hunt and do things like that so it's really neat to see um, to see them to see them grow together and to actually have Tom teach them things so it's. Uh, it's pretty interesting, so I'll put some videos in here um, about that. So this is Tom. He is the dad of the four kittens, and this was when he first arrived here at the farm. He was checking everything out and finding his way around. So these are the four kittens. This is Mike, Will, Dustin, and Lucas. And this was their first day here on the farm. They were getting used to things and I swear I actually thought I lost all four of them because they were hiding so good. But they're doing really well and they're super cute to watch romp around and play. When they first got here, they were very skittish of people and didn't want to come by you. There was only one cat, and it was one of the tan ones, I think it was Dustin, that would actually come by you and love on you and rub up against your leg, and everyone else just was standoffish and would hiss and, and just didn't want to be around you. Except for Tom. Tom always wanted to be around you. 
Since these are barn cats, Corey's going to build them a heated house to put inside the barn for the winter since they will be living outside. I'm highly allergic to cats, so they can't come in. So we're going to make sure that they're comfortable and that they're taken care of, especially in the winter time. But for the most part, they stay outside in the barn and they follow Tom around. And this is what they do most of their days, play in the hay and run around. They're getting a little bit more adventurous now since they're getting bigger. And they have been venturing out around the property a little bit more, but they really don't go too far and definitely stay by dad. See, bailing wire works on everything. Or bailing string. Tom's a really good dad. He would actually go out in the mornings and check the tall grass that was in these areas where the cats would play. And he would check and make sure that there was nothing out there and then he would go on his way and let the cats do what they wanted. So it was really sweet to see, to see him taking care of the babies. And we did cut this tall grass down just because we didn't want this to be a dangerous area for the cats. So this area was taken care of and I pulled up a lot of the weeds that were actually around here as well. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing, Tom? You know it's a good kitty. Yeah. That's a good kitty. Oh, I know. So happy. Most of my day is spent out in the barn with the horses and all the animals, so I would always check and make sure that there was nothing in these pallets where the cats are playing before, before they started romping around. So I always check and make sure that there's nothing around and. Do a good thorough check of the barn first thing in the morning and then again in the afternoon and then again at night. So I make sure that nothing's out there still because I don't want the cats to get hurt. Now that they're getting a little bit older, they're more trusting of people. So this is the kitties with Cory. We also got them a cat tree because we wanted to give them an elevated position so they would actually be able to have somewhere to sit and lay and not have to go scrounge around in pallets or lay in the hay. So this is all of them in the cat tree. These are some other pictures of the cats from just around the farm and cute things that they were doing. And my first love is photography so some of these pictures are actually my professional photography pictures. But since having the kitties in the barn and Tom around the barn, we haven't seen any more snakes inside. So we're very glad that they're keeping the snakes away and that they're taking care of the problem that we had. So we're super excited to have them and can't wait to see them grow up. So I did see this snake on the property. So we still obviously have snakes in the area. This one wasn't poisonous. This was just a gardener snake. He was out by our trash can. So I think right now that they're just more passing through than sticking around on the property. This guy was actually coming out of going through our backyard and on his way out through the fence. So he didn't linger around either. So that's a good thing. 
now that I had the barn taken care of and I had a solution for the barn that also kept, uh, kept the cats were going to keep mice away and any other little rodents that might be lingering in the area, um, just to keep, that was just another layer of protection and an added bonus to get rid of my mice too. So um, now that I had the barn taken care of, I needed to find a way to keep the chicken safe in the new coop. So I found out that in my research that there's another type of bird that will actually keep snakes away. And this is what I did. So I went to the feed store today. This is my friend Kara. And um, I went and I was supervised this time, but we got something in that box. <laughs> We got guineas. So, we got a lot of guineas actually. <laughs> Before I went to the feed store with Kara, I did actually purchase four baby guineas, and these were the first four that I purchased. They also had lavenders, which are the gray birds that you see here. Those are the ones that I purchased with Kara. I just thought they were beautiful birds, and I, I couldn't stop thinking about them, so that's why I went back and got the other two. So Kara came with me on that trip to get the lavender guineas and they're actually going to protect our flock. So we're super excited. We have six guineas and they're all doing well. And we're excited to watch them grow up and they're getting along well with our chickens. We did put them in with the chickens into the new coop. So I will have a video coming up on that as well. And, but we're super excited to watch them grow up and live out their lives. Yes, we got guineas. So in my reading, guineas will actually surround a snake and peck it to death if it gets in the coop. And they're also alert birds. They make a funny squawking sound when there's something that's in their area that they don't like. <laughs> On top of the roosters and the guineas, I thought that everything was pretty well taken care of with the chickens. Um, the new coop does have half inch by half inch galvanized chicken fencing. So nothing's really gonna get in there, but I just wanted to have that extra layer of protection in case something did actually ha happen to get in there. So um, I will have a video soon too on our chicken coop build and all the things that we learned and <laughs> what not to do on the next one. <laughs> um, but that's been a, a process, but that was the reason that we got the guineas. And something else that I read, another bird that will actually keep um, snakes away are geese but geese need a water source and that was just not an option for us with building the new chicken coop um, i couldn't add another project to corey's list that's ever ever growing and continues to be this long <laughs> of projects to do around the farm so building a pond probably would not be in something that he would have appreciated so um, geese and ducks are something that i do want in the future so stay tuned for that because that might be something that we do next year but once all the finishing touches are put on the chicken coop, um, I do plan to put um, like a planting box around the outside or the exterior of the chicken coop. And one thing that I did read um, is that snakes can't, can't easily go over gravel. So instead of putting mulch in those beds, I'm going to put gravel um, in there just as an ex another extra layer of protection for the chicken coop. And um, definitely plan to plant some lemongrass. Apparently that repels snakes as well. And it also keeps away mosquitoes. So definitely something I'm gonna put in the planting beds for sure. Some other things that I saw to keep snakes away were essential oil mixtures. Um, and obviously those are natural, but they have to be reapplied every couple days. And if it rains, they have to be reapplied 
So I just thought that was kind of impractical and was probably going to be expensive for the large area that we needed to cover. So that just wasn't an option for us either. And actually this year we've actually been getting a lot of rain. So um, that wasn't going to work for us either. So another thing that I found was chopped garlic and onions with rock salt. This is something that I might try in the chicken coop after we get everything finished and I might put that in the planting bed. Apparently if you sprinkle that around, it's another deterrent to keep snakes away. So that one I haven't tested yet, um, but I will let you know how that works. Um, if anyone else has any other tips and tricks that they use to keep snakes out of their barn, I'd love to hear from you. Put them in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this video on ways to keep snakes out of your barn. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything that's happening here around the farm. And stay tuned because there's lots more coming up. There's so many things happening around here with the chickens and the cats and the donkeys and the horses and everything going on around here. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything happening around here. But thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your support and we'll see you next time. Thanks.